set free to worship you.
Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Sunday service, the streaming service on the third Sunday after Pentecost, on the 21st of June, the year 2020 of our Lord, and happy Father's Day to all of the fathers who are watching and participating with us this morning. We have several announcements for the good of the congregation uh, this morning. One, uh, again, this is our last Sunday where we will be uh, streaming and so through this particular Sunday next Sunday we will gather together and worship in the Epworth Park there next to the church with our rain location being in Heron Hall and our streaming service will be moved into the evening time although we will stream live the actual service that we have in the park as well we do have a, a variety of things that that we want to know about coming together in the park 
please bring your favorite lawn chair or blanket. Uh, we'll be asking folks to use social distancing guidelines uh, while in the park. Uh, during our singing time especially, we would like to ask everybody to wear a face mask. Um, and when we're in the hall, to also wear a face mask throughout the service. Uh, again, the rain location will be here in Hall. And we hope that everyone will be able to come and join us on this particular day. A reminder that our offerings may be made in person or online or sent in by mail. If you're looking to mail a check, please uh, send it to Epworth United Methodist Church, Post Office Box 163, Epworth, Georgia 30541. Uh, you can click the QR code that is on the Facebook page in the pictures, or you can go to our website and click on the link for making donations of tithes and offerings if you choose. The fifth Sunday activities uh, have been canceled uh, until sometime in July. We're still waiting for the, the date on that to be announced. Our fourth of July activities have also been um, canceled with by the Epworth Community uh, Club due to the coronavirus precautions. We do have one activity that we want to lift up for folks on uh, July, July 11th, and more details will follow, but that is a, a fundraising opportunity for our mission group with the Autism Foundation that will be in Copper Hill. There'll be a sidewalk art sale, um, gatherings together um, at, at one of the, the breweries there in town, and we encourage people to come and support that activity. For our prayer list, we do have our continuing long-standing prayer list, of course, for our nation, our leaders, and our church, and those who have continuing health care concerns. We also want to lift up those who are in our military, uh, who are serving in active duty at this time, those who are serving in our health care um, environment as a, as a nurse, or, or those who are serving in, in the service. Um, of our of our communities through law enforcement we want to lift them up and we have several continuing prayer requests that we want to lift up um, in terms of immediate need uh, we want to lift up the victims of the coronavirus uh, all of the cities in our nation as we continue to um, try to heal from various different things that are going on uh, from from basically folks who are trying to take a, a righteous message and, and twist it and turn it into times of violence. We want to lift up the leaders of our cities for wisdom and discernment at this time. We also want to lift up our uh, folks who are jobless, broken families, and particularly we want to lift up uh, Harriet as she is recovering from a time in the hospital. We want to lift up uh, Glenda Green as she's preparing for surgery tomorrow. We also want to lift up, um, and as an addition to our our prayer list, um, Gene Spear, uh, Tina Spear's brother. He was in a motorcycle accident uh, over the weekend and is currently banged up pretty badly um, and is at the uh, Tennessee Hospital in Knoxville um, recovering at this time. We want to continue to lift him up in prayer, as well as continued prayers for Dale and for Drew and for the variety of folks that, that we have listed on our prayer list. I also want to lift up a, a thanks to Hannah Price. Uh, she is the person who has recorded our call to worship for this morning. Um, those of you who may not know Hannah, you might know her sister um, who is sir, has worked with our Autism Foundation as a participant. And we want to uh, again thank Hannah for her service. And so now as we prepare, let us prepare our hearts and minds for service. For the worship of God. May the Lord Jesus Christ's grace be with you and also with you. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Our call to worship this morning is as a deer pants by Hannah Price.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks on this day and all days for the many blessings that you have given to us. Lord, we pray that people will see and come to know you as the Father, as the one who provides for all our needs and who always remains steadfast. We ask now that you pour out your Spirit upon us who are gathered here today so that we may fully hear your word and experience your love. In Christ's name, amen. Our opening hymn is How Deep is the Father's Love? Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from the book of Genesis, 
beginning in the 21st chapter at the 8th verse. The child grew, and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you, for it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I'll make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning, and took bread and the skin of water, and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder, along with the child, and sent her away. And she departed, and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off, about the distance of a bowshot, for she said, Do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven, and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. She went, and filled the skin with water, and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy, and he grew up, he lived in the wilderness, and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please join me in our responsive reading. Our responsive reading comes to us today from the 86th Psalm, beginning at the first verse. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am devoted to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call on you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my cry of supplication. In the day of my trouble I call on you, for you will answer me. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and bow down before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant. Save the child of your serving girl. Show me a sign of your favor, so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame, because you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. And now, as we prepare for our children's moment, let us join together in our favorite hymn, Jesus Loves Me. something interesting to talk about today. Do you know that some people like to do things that are called hobbies? What are some hobbies that people might enjoy? 
Hmm, that's right. Well, reading, knitting, and photography are all popular hobbies. Some people like to build things even, like model cars or airplanes. Others may enjoy outdoor activities like fishing or hiking. Do you have a hobby? What's your hobby? Well, do you think that God has a hobby? I know. Okay, the Bible doesn't tell us that God has a hobby. But if he did, do you know what I think it might be? Bird watching. Yes, bird watching. If I use my imagination, I can see God sitting in heaven with a pair of binoculars. And as he looks through those binoculars, maybe he has a book with the pictures of all the beautiful birds that he has created. And he's trying to see how many of them he can find with his binoculars. You know, if I really stretch my imagination, I can hear, even hear him say, there's a bluebird and a cardinal. Look, there's an eagle, a meadowlark, and a sparrow. A sparrow? Of course he would see a sparrow. Well, there's millions of them. You've seen them, you know, the common, ordinary brown sparrow. But God must have loved them because he made so many of them. Now, what birds do you see around the room? I don't know about a pelican. Parrot? Parakeet? Maybe. Well, one day, Jesus was teaching his disciples that they should not be afraid. And Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid when people threaten you. Two sparrows are sold for a penny, but not a single sparrow falls to the ground without your father knowing it. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. See, a sparrow seems like a common bird. And it's been said that God must have loved the common people because he made so many of them. Well, I don't think that God sees us as common or ordinary. If he did, he would not love us in such an uncommon and extraordinary way. The Bible says, give all your worries and cares to God for he cares about you, and we are more precious to him than a whole flock of sparrows, and we know how much he loves the sparrow. So let us pray. Dear God, we know that we are precious in your sight. Thank you for loving us with such an uncommon and extraordinary love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is the time in our service when we bring our prayers and our praises to the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks this day for the, again, many blessings in which you have given to us. We give you thanks for the fathers in our lives that have taught us to seek you. We pray for the fathers as well that that may not have a relationship with you, that they may truly come to know that you are indeed our Father, the one who remains steadfast and who has loved us so much that you gave your only Son to die for us. Lord, we pray for our nation this time. At this time, we pray for our leaders of the nation, for our president, our vice president, for our speakers of the House, for the Senate, for those in our state government and our governor, we ask that they continue to turn their ear to you, Lord. Pour out your spirit upon them and convict their hearts so they may seek you for wisdom and discernment, that we might be governed in peace and give you the glory. We also pray for our church, for the leaders of our church, as we continue to look at ways in which we may be emboldened by your spirit. May we not be asleep. May we be alive and filled with the Holy Spirit so that we may do the work that you have called us to do. We ask that you be with all of those who are continuing to serve in our military, who are away from their homes and who are on active duty. Lord, keep them safe and, and bring them home to us. May they see you. May they feel your spirit and know your presence in a mighty way. We especially lift up to you, Clint and Jacob and Greg, Chris and Cody, Corbin and Caleb, Luke, 
Alina, Austin, and Matt. Guard them and protect them and be with them always. We ask that you be with those who are serving in our law enforcement, for those who are serving in our as health care workers in this time in which the virus is still around and causing distress. Put your spirit around them of protection, Lord, and, and give them strength. May they see your love and your service to all through their hands. We pray for Buck and for Lacey and for Pete, for Frank and for Sandy and for Sarah, for Sharon and for Tyler and for Jennifer, for Grant and for Sandy. Give them strength. Give them compassion. May they see the world through your eyes and protect them and bring them home each night safe and sound. Lord, we pray for our cities and for those who are indeed having uh, challenges with the coronavirus. We pray for the healthcare workers that are in harm's way and for those who are continuing to care for those who are sick. We pray for the families who are separated from those who are in the hospital because of the virus. Keep them safe, Lord. We pray for those who have no job, whose joblessness is, is such that it causes despair. Give them a peace, Lord. Be with families that are broken or who are having times of stress. Strengthen the family unit. Lord, may we be called and drawn to you. We pray for Brian and to give thanks for his recovery from the stroke. We pray for Chuck and his continuing battle with cancer. And we give thanks for his heart of willingness to serve the Autism Foundation and, and do things even though he is dealing with treatments. We pray for Harriet for strength in her recovery from the hospital. And we give thanks for the continued good news that we hear about Kahuta and his his physical therapy is going well and that he's only a few more weeks left before he can be without the neck brace after his, his surgery. We pray for Michael with his stroke and continued strength for a long recovery. We give thanks that, that Glenda has had successful eye surgery and we continue to pray for a continued recovery of her eyes so that her sight may be restored. We pray for those prayers that are unspoken out loud amongst us but that you know for you know all things and hear all prayers we pray for mura and for dale as they are dealing with their their baby jasper who is are who's a who's premature lord we just pray for strength we continue to give thanks for lily and and her strength as she is growing stronger each and every day Lord, we want to lift up to you Jean, who has had a motorcycle accident that nobody knows exactly what happened, but from which serious injuries have occurred. We pray for the doctors and nurses providing care, and we give thanks that the hospital that he is in is one which will continue to allow him to grow in strength and mending and recovery. We pray for Glenda as she is preparing for surgery on Monday, Lord. Guide and direct all of the doctors and nurses that are, are performing the surgery and give her strength and recovery and an amazing recovery as she, as she comes out and returns home. We pray for Dale and his battle with cancer and for Drew. We give thanks for some of the recovery that has happened, but pray that he really hears your heart and turns to you to strengthen the days that are coming ahead. And now, Lord, we pray to you the prayer that your Son, our Lord and Savior, has taught us to pray in confidence. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our epistle lesson today comes to us from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, in the sixth chapter beginning at the first verse. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? 
Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again, death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin, and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of God, for the people of God, thanks be to God. Our next hymn is It Is Well. And now be assured that God hears our repentance. So let us turn our minds to the truth of confessing our sins to God and to one another. Saying together, Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. And we have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Now hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory be to God. Amen. And now let us share that peace with one another. Take this time to greet one another in the chat next to us and, and share with one another the peace of the Lord. comes to us today from the Gospel of Matthew, in the 10th chapter, beginning at the 24th verse. A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall into the ground unperceived by your father. Even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace on earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves the father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves the son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, I give you thanks for this day and for the many blessings that you have in our life. Lord, I thank you for hearing your word, for knowing exactly what it is that you would have me hear. And I pray, Lord, that I will continue to keep the faith, the faith that you have shown us by great example of Abraham and the faith of my dad, the faith of our fathers before us. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, for you are my rock and my foundation. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. 
Happy Father's Day to all of the fathers that are with us this morning and to all the men who have served and as a father figure to the children that they meet. And today I want to talk a little bit about the faith of a dad. Now my dad, who is no longer with us here on earth, but who I know without hesitation I will be with in heaven, has given me a tremendous gift. Growing up, I knew him as a father figure, as a, as a parent of five kids in a blended family. I'm sure that, that dad had many stories to tell. In particular, I'm sure that in 1958, when he was in the Coast Guard Reserve and, and moving into active duty and, and serving uh, during the Bay of Pigs, that he had no idea what was ahead of him. That he would have one marriage and, and two children that, that failed, and who then would meet another person who also had a marriage that had not worked out and between the two of them they would come together and serve and raise a brood of kids of five of us coming together as a blended family adopting three of us so that we would all have the same family name my dad was someone who was a man of faith a man of action and a person that you could trust when i think about the relationship that the dad had with mom it was not always perfect. There were things that were stressful, especially when trying to raise the kids. But there was also times of fun and times of, of just joy that, that I don't even really remember sometimes. It was, it was things that dad, who didn't necessarily want pets to begin with, but then grew so accustomed to having a, a dog that was bigger than any he'd had before, being at his side faithfully without ever leaving. Where everywhere he went, whether it be to set up stores or to mow or to do yard work, the dog was with him left and right, as faithful as always. And so when I think about the faith of a father and I think about the faith of a dad, I think about my dad. I think about the man who took us every single Sunday to church there was no question about where we would be. We would all line up, we'd get in the car, and we'd go off to, to where the service was going to be. And inevitably, it never mis was mistaken that all of us would have to go sit on the front row because there was no other place where you had seven seats all together. And so there we were in front, dad on one side, mom on the other, mostly to keep the peace among all the kids, but also where we were front and center to hear the word of God preached, to see the sacraments being offered, and to know that dad, as he continued his service in the church and the choir, and as an elder, that he set the example for each and every one of us. And so in our, today on Father's Day, I'm thinking about the faith of my dad. I also think about the faith of Abraham that we see in our Old Testament lesson today. It was by faith that Abraham was attributed to righteousness. It was the fact that he listened to God and he did what God said, even though it may not have been something that he necessarily wanted to do. That's especially evident in our story today. Abraham didn't want Ishmael to leave. He didn't want Hagar and Ishmael to be cast out, but you know, being the father with two wives in this particular case, there was bound to be dis disagreement and bound to be jealousies and all sorts of things that were going on in the family dynamic. But the truth of it is that, that Abraham was made a promise by God. And he and Sarah had tried to figure it out in good faith of their own, and do things themselves, and, and Ishmael was born. And as a firstborn, there was always this idea and this thought of, of being able to have part of Abraham's inheritance. But Sarah didn't want anything to do with it, as we read in our scripture. And so she told Abraham, they got to go. I'm sorry, but they've got to go. And he, he was distressed, as any dad would be. 
And so God reaches out to Abraham and he says, don't be afraid, don't be stressed. And here, listen, this is probably something for each of us fathers and men in the congregation to listen to. He said what? Do what your wife says. Do what she says. Listen to Sarah. Your, the promise that I made you is through your son Isaac, not through Ishmael. So Abraham didn't buck God. He did what he was supposed to do. He let them go. And in return, God does indeed hear and know that, that Ishmael would have a large family of nations himself and that he would grow strong and that he would have this understanding that, that Abraham would be really the father of three different faiths across our globe. But Abraham listened. Abraham did what he was supposed to do, and God indeed remained faithful. So on this Father's Day, on this day in which we think about all the various different people in our lives, those who have served as our dads, those who have served as our a father figure or a role model, I think about them and give thanks. I give thanks that, that there are men that God calls to be an example. I chose the word dad today on purpose. When we hear Jesus talking about his father, a word that is used by him is Abba or dad, not just father or father figure or or padre, or whatever it might be, but dad, it means that there's a close relationship there, an intimacy there that you can't necessarily get somewhere else. And Jesus and God, of course, are one. And we have seen God because we have seen Jesus. Jesus told the disciples that when they wanted to see God himself. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And so on this Father's Day, as we think about the faith of our dads, and we think about our own faith, will the Father be reflected in us? Will we love unconditionally those around? Will we be faithful in our attendance and in our worship of God? Will we listen to God and to others? And so that on a future Father's Day, when children are looking back over time, do they see the faith of their dad the same way that Abraham had faith? Are they trusting in the Lord? And are they seeking the Lord in everything that they do? And most importantly, do they trust and have the faith that alone gives them salvation, the faith in Jesus Christ? Amen. Our hymn in response to the word is Nearer My God to Thee.
Let us now join together in our historic statement of faith, the words of the Nicene Creed, found in our hymnal on page 880 and on the screen in front of you. Let us join together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. This is the time in our service when we bring our offerings to the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the many blessings in our life. We ask that you continue to pour out your blessing upon us and that our gifts and our tithes will be acceptable to you. Multiply them and grow them so that you may receive all the glory and honor for it. In Christ's name, amen. Prayerfully at this time, we would ask you to prepare your offering for the Lord. You may go to the link on our Facebook page or through the QR code, or you may mail your offering in to Epworth at the post office box in front of you. Post Office Box 163, Epworth, Georgia, 30541. closing hymn on this Sunday is Great is Thy Faithfulness.
And now as we prepare to depart from this place, may the Lord God be and abide with you always. May peace be with you until we come again. And may we see each other next week in person and give thanks and praise to God for all of his many blessings. Depart in peace. Amen. I just want to be where you are.